What's up, I'm Pete Last Guy, and this is Raw Emotion, where I take a look at this week's Monday Night Raw and tell you a little bit about what I think and a lot about how I feel, and I feel good about this week's episode. I really do. I want to start off on a negative, though, just to get that out of the way. Mick Foley, I love you. I love what you've done in your past. Your career has been amazing. You're an inspiration, but as a GM, you seem... You seem weak, Mick. He seems constantly confused and just bewildered and perplexed by everything that's going on, trying to appease... You know, Stephanie, while at the same time, like, trying to be tough on the wrestlers, but not actually being tough on the wrestlers. Like, after that whole thing, after Seth Rollins' run-in last week, where you'll see me in my office, or whatever. And, like, was this the punishment? Was, was it just a wrestling match? Something he was probably gonna do anyway? Okay. It just seems like he's kind of getting booked weird as a GM, and almost like the performances, like he's kind of phoning him in a little bit. Not to make accusations, maybe this is all on purpose, I don't know, we'll see, I just, I don't, I don't like it, okay, I don't like it. But on to something I did like, A, Kevin Owens in a suit, still loving that. B, Seth Rollins continuing his slow, just, just such a slow, slow face turn. It's so slow, but it's happening. It's happening now. Let's take a cue from Kurt Hawkins and face the facts here, okay? One, Rollins has been facing off almost exclusively against heels recently. Number two, he's feuding with the authority, or what remains of the authority anyway. Number three, he's wrestling face now. It looked like he went for his old Nevada Kedavra finisher at one point there. It was caught, you know, and, and reversed, but still. He's doing all these top row moves and these suicide dives. I'm really, I really think it's finally happening, guys. We're getting face Rollins. Yes. Not gonna talk much about Braun Strowman today, although he did face off against Sin Cara in another match that he actually had to work for the win. But I do want to mention his pants. I'm sure it was just some sort of elastic material, but the positioning of it, where it was sewn in, it made it look like he peed himself. It just, he came out looking like he peed himself. Also, what's, what's going on with his nose? Can somebody tell me what's going on with Braun Strowman's nose? It's every time there's a close-up. It's just, nah, nah. What happened to you, Braun? what happened. Another women's match this week, and again, not, not much for me to say about it, because it seems like it's just been the same ladies, just over and over again. Like, I get that we're building the feud, okay, going into Clash of Champions, but, you know, screen time, okay? The other ladies want some of it. Let's talk new Bo Dallas. I am all in. 100%. I believe in Bo. I love this unstoppable rhyming beast that he's become ever since his drunk plane Lion King incident. Google it. It's ridiculous and I, it's a cool new direction, but it seems like the crowd wasn't super into it as we actually got chance of Let's Go Jobber. Come on, guys, this is a cool angle, all right? I, I think it is. Maybe I'm just a gigantic mark. I don't know, but I like it, okay? Come on. When the Cesaro versus Sheamus best of seven series was announced, I was kind of just like, uh, okay, yeah, we get it. It'll go all the way down to the last match and hatha da, whatever. This isn't going to be much of anything. Uh, skip. But I've come to look forward to these matches, honestly. These are just really, again, two really good wrestlers, and at various points, during this week's match, I believed that Sheamus could have ended it early. And going into Clash of Champions, I still feel like it's anybody's series at this point. Because Cesaro, sure, he looks super strong off of these you know, last, what, three wins. But he's still selling that back a lot. So it still feels like this could go to either of these guys. Just it, And it's great. I love watching these two giant European beast men just pummel each other, play off each other. The counters. Oh, it's so good. Jericho! is back with the lists, baby. Yes! While certainly a much shorter list than his 1,004 holds that you might remember from back in the day if you don't, again, Google it. This is, I'm typing, Google it, Google it. The list of Jericho, I like it. I like it a lot. I also like the fact that apparently Chris Jericho is the guy who's allowed to use the insider lingo on shows, because I'm pretty sure, was it last, last week? I want to say last week, he accused somebody of being a holy foley mark, and then this week, he was accusing, oh, I forget, I think it was Mick Foley again, of uh, cheap baby face pops. That's about as insider lingo as you can get there, buddy. But I guess he's Chris Jericho, he does what he wants. I am a little bit bugged, though, that that segment really only served to introduce a giant friggin', like, what, 10 band tag team match that was completely... Unnecessary, I thought it would filler match again, guys. Filler. I mean, it's still fun to watch. Big Cass is is a is a giant, so you know it's fun to watch him do stuff. But 
Why did this match need to happen? Woo! Cruiserweights! You know, because they jump and they, they fly around, so I'm, I'm jumping to demonstrate that it's... I'm very excited about the Cruiserweights, okay? I thought this was a good way to introduce them. I love the wrestlers. I love the belt, which we didn't get to see. That was my one problem. I would have actually brought out TJP with the belt during that opening segment before the actual match that they had just to build some excitement, just to introduce the champion and the championship to the WWE Universe who didn't watch the CWC. But... Whatever, maybe he was unavailable. But I was concerned watching the tournament that these guys would be a little bit weak on character because everybody in the tournament just kind of seemed like your generic babyface, I'm here to wrestle and give it my all kind of characters, you know? But that looks like it's not going to be the case. It does look like they're mostly faces, yes, but they've all got pretty distinct characters. I think the weakest are probably Cedric Alexander, who just is kind of doing the Apollo Crews thing where it's, you know, I'm here to fight and I'm, yeah, I'm a... I'm a wrestler. Yeah. Then you got Grand Metallic, which I'm pretty certain is supposed to be pronounced that way. Everybody on TV keeps saying Grand Metallic, like you put the emphasis on the last syllable, but if I remember my Spanish classes correctly, it's supposed to go in the second to last syllable. Unless there's an accent mark, which there's not. So, whatever. I don't know. I'm going to keep calling him Grand Metallic because I'm a contrarian and I'm not going to do what you tell me to do, Vince. Hmm. But he mostly just seemed like, hey, look, guys. Yeah, it's another luchador. Aye! Which I suppose we could use some more luchadors on Raw because the only one we've seen in the last, you know, few weeks really has just been getting fed to Braun Strowman over and over. So yeah, let's give us a, let's get a, let's get a luchador in the cruiserweights there. That'll be uh, that'll be fun. I'm excited. Rich Swan is gonna be one of my favorites. He came out dancing around and jumping around, and wearing pink, looking like he's trying to audition to be the fourth member of the New Day, but he's fantastic to watch. So is Brian Kendrick, the one heel out of this group of four that we got to see this week. And he, ooh, he's got the crazy eyes, man. I'm excited for him. He's got the heel tactics down while still being just this fantastic cruiserweight with all the flying and the flippy stuff. Flippy stuff. We're not monetized, but like one day we'd like to be, you know? Okay, just, all right. But I am glad Brian Kendrick won because again, you're going to want that powerful heel in there to face off against TJP's face. He's a very over baby face at this point. I, if you watch the tournament, you know. If you haven't watched the tournament, just go watch some select matches. Don't watch the whole thing necessarily unless you've got that kind of time. But it's very exciting. TJ Perkins is fantastic. The people love him. The kids love him. Brian Kendrick, powerful heel. I think we're going to see a lot of growth out of him. He, he could be a force to be reckoned with. I'm excited. Cruiserweights, which brings us to our main event, a cage match on Raw. That was cool. Kevin Knowles faces off against Roman Reigns, and let me just tell you, these two dudes, were they, they were built for cage matches. This is great, watching these guys wrestle in a cage. And the common, you know, criticism of this is going to be that there were no stakes. There's nothing on the line. No matter who won or lost, nobody was getting a title shot or losing a title shot or anything like that. Nothing was changing hands. It was just a big nothing match, which, okay, yeah. I understand that because when you don't have anything on the line, you lose a lot of the gravitas that's usually associated with a cage match. I get that. That being said, though, I kind of like the fact that there was nothing on the line because that meant instead of sitting here wondering like, ah, what happens if the guy I want to win doesn't win or the guy that I don't want to win wins or blah, 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 I could just sit back and just, just watch, just watch two good wrestlers wrestle good, <laughs> you know, and just enjoy the spectacle of it. And I did. It was fantastic. I loved it. Again, Roman Reigns, he's not as bad as you think he is. Chill out, internet. And then of course we had the run-ins at the end of the match. You pretty much knew that was gonna come, but still, they did some good stuff with it. Rusev runs in, beating up Roman Reigns. He gets in the cage, relocks the door, even though there's no roof on the cage, so what's that accomplished? But anyway, he goes and beats the tar out of Roman Reigns, and at one point while he's doing this, you can hear Kevin Owens ye yelling, Match got something! Match got something! Get in there! Kevin Owens! You're simply the best! But then, in the midst of that, as Roman Reigns is under attack and in need of assistance, who runs in? Seth Rollins. Yes, yeah, Seth Rollins comes dashing down the ramp, hops the cage, gets in there, and maybe, maybe, this was just because he wanted to hurt Kevin Owens and he doesn't like Rusev either. Maybe he was coming in to attack the heels. But it sure looked to me like he was running in to help Roman. What? That was me turning my face. It's a face 
It's a face turn. I'm turning my... He's turning face! So we'll see what happens at Clash of Champions. Not... Not Clash of the Champions, mind you, okay? Clash of Champions. Maybe he'll make a full face turn there. Who knows? All sorts of crazy crap could go down. Stick around, though, because this week we'll be dropping our in or out video for that pay-per-view. That'll be up in the next couple of days. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for Clash of Champions. First Raw pay-per-view exclusively since the brand split. Tell us what you think is going to go down there. Tell us what you thought about this week's Monday Night Raw. Also, in the comments, because that's all I've got, guys. So go ahead and like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, just shut up, man. Okay, there's enough negativity in the world. Watch the news. But share it, too, and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with all this wrestling content we got coming out here on, wow, a pretty regular basis now. We're very proud of ourselves. <laughs> but that's all. I have for today. So please have a wonderful day. I've been Pete Last Guy. This has been Raw Emotion. And you have been wonderful, and we are out of here in one, two, three. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, allergies. <laughs> Getting his face Rollins. Suffice the face. Suffice the This is Zara versus Seamus. Versus Seamus. Well, this is Zara versus Seamus. <sighs> oh. Ever try and finish a sentence when you've got a burp just like right, right there, and you're like, no, I gotta finish. But I'm, I gotta, I gotta finish. It. <clears throat> it's no good. I'm glad Brian Kendrick won because again, you're gonna want the powerful face. <clears throat>